this is Anna with the Paint Mixer um, here today, I'm going to guide you through a really fun holiday painting. So I don't know if you've joined us for any of these classes before, but I'm really glad you're here. So pretty much how it works is I will be guiding you guys step by step through this painting. Uh, it's called Christmas Tree Farm, kind of a cute holiday piece here. And um, you'll kind of follow along. The cool thing about these YouTube live videos is you can always pause them. If you are taking your time or need a break, you can always pause and kind of join back into the class. So if you have purchased one of our Creativity To Go kits, then now is a good time to open up that kit. So I'll go through the contents uh, just so you know what everything is and how to set up your space. So in the kit, first up, I want you to find this little guy. So in here is three in one. We have a napkin, a palette here in the center, a little cardboard piece, and then the butcher paper. So definitely protect your space. Put the butcher paper down on whatever surface you're painting and get your palette ready. So we're working with acrylic paints. Um, and that means if you get this on your clothes or on your carpet, um, it becomes permanent once it dries. So just be aware <laughs> to probably not wear your favorite cashmere sweater while we're painting. So I have a little apron on today, um, but now's a good time to kind of change into something maybe a little older that you don't mind getting paint on. Um, also talking about paint, go ahead and get your paint. So in our kits, you've probably received these little, almost like salad dressing containers. So open them up. And the cool thing about our kits is we don't need a lot of paint. Our canvas is really small. Um, so I like to kind of scoop my paint with the paintbrush onto my palette. So that way I have a little bit of extra left in here in case I need more. But then my palette is where I'll do all my blending and any kind of doodling. So like the magic of television, here's my palette all ready to go. Um, so go ahead, load up your palette. And the one thing that is not in your kit that is really important is a cup of water. So go ahead and get a cup of water. This is really important for when we're changing colors. Um, the paint is water-based, so we can rinse our brushes in here. As far as brushes go, we have two. The larger of the two, I'm going to call the mama brush. So the mama is really great for larger um, areas on your canvas, and the little guy, the baby, is better for those small details. So both brushes, I like to leave them in the water cup just so the bristles stay nice and they don't dry out your bristles as well. Okay, so just a little, little bit more before we get going. So this is all about being present, having fun, and not being perfect. So if you are feeling a little anxious, maybe you haven't painted in a long time, maybe you've never painted before ever, and this is your first time. That's great. Um, that's why I'm here, is to kind of make it easy and kind of hold your hand along the way. Um, if you ever, again, are really confused, um, you can always refer back to your instructions if you have one of our kits. So we have written out step by step if um, the live instruction is a little, a little extra. Okay, so I think we're ready to paint. Go ahead and find your mama brush and your canvas. Okay, so we're gonna start with the background. Pretty easy, a nice warm up here. We are going to mix up some white and some yellow. So check it out, I'm super lazy. I don't even blend them on my brush because whenever I take it to the canvas, it's gonna blend magically. So this is kind of like a creamy, what is this like? Like a lemon meringue pie or just kind of like a creamy hollandaise sauce. Everything I'm thinking about is food related. I'm recording this the day before Thanksgiving, so food is on my mind. I don't know about you guys, but um, another little tip here for your background is to dip your brush in water every couple strokes. You may find that, you know, with each brush stroke, you're not fully covering your canvas. It may kind of look like this down here. If that's you, just add a little water to your brush and that will help the paint fill in all of the texture of your canvas. Also, my canvas has a little boo-boo down here, but that's okay. So continuing all over with a mix of 
yellow and white. This is mostly white, a little bit of yellow. And another little tip here as you're going along is to cover your sides as well. So if you plan on, you know, hanging this maybe right above your bed, maybe right above your mantle, <laughs> um, you don't want to buy a frame. Frames are really expensive. I don't know if you found this. Frames are often more times more expensive than the artwork. So if you want to ditch a frame, you can always just paint your side edges. I'm going to paint mine this background creamy yellow color. So go ahead and do so. If you get paint on your fingers, that's okay. That comes off. It's just the carpet and the clothes I worry about. All right. So I also do this very often, so I'm pretty quick. So take your time, pause if you need, but I am all covered. And it's okay to have it be streaky. See how there's some variations in the yellow and the white? That is just fine. This is the background, I'm not getting too attached to it because we're gonna put a lot of stuff over top. So before um, I move on, I have to let this dry. So you can either sit and watch paint dry, which is kind of boring, or you can just shake a little bit, like so. You can turn it into cardio. You can add some squats if you want. <laughs> but just shaking it really does speed up the drying process. Now is a good time to put on your favorite song and kind of just rock out. You can also grab a snack. Usually when I'm teaching classes in person or on Zoom, I kind of have music going, but I'm letting you guys pick your music for this class. And sometimes people ask, how do you tell if it's dry? Well, if it's still shiny, like, like looks like uh, little shiny bits, those are still wet. You can always do the tack test, still wet. And it's gonna depend on how much paint you initially put on. So if you are really heavy handed with your light yellow, it's gonna take a while. So it might be a two song shake. I'm almost there. So also while you're shaking, I want you to be thinking about what you're gonna put on your truck. So I put my last name. Um, but you can always do, I don't know, Ford. If you're really loyal to a certain car company, you can write that. Uh, I think it's kind of fun to put your name. You don't even have to put anything, but just something to be thinking about so you're not caught off guard when we get there. All right, I think mine is dry enough. So now I'm going to move on to the shadows. So if you take a look up close, you can see here we have a horizon line. That's where the ground meets the sky. And we have some kind of blue shadows and even some little tire marks right here. So we're gonna do that. And this is gonna be with the mama brush again. So rinse, rinse her out really well. Make sure there's no yellow left on there. And then I'm gonna take a little blue and a little white, blue and white mama brush. And here is where you get to make some decisions. Like, how high do I want my ground to be? I suggest doing it about a third of the way down because our truck's gonna be kind of tall and we have tall trees. So if I put my ground way up here, I'm not gonna have a lot of fun making my itty bitty truck. So couple inches down, blue and white. Just adding some side to side strokes. And a tip here is to water down your paint a little. So adding a little water, making the paint a little more viscous, a little more flowy, helps it kind of blend nicely and seamlessly in here. And keeping the blue mostly at the horizon line. And then, remember those little tire tracks? I may actually, I'm gonna hold off on those just so I make sure I line it up with my truck. 
hard to, it's like chicken, what came first, chicken or the egg? Well, I'm gonna do my truck first before tire tracks. That's just me. Okay, so now we have a nice ground which we can start to map out our truck. So the truck is a little intimidating, but it really is just a couple of rectangles. So if you wanna practice, maybe on the butcher paper or if you have like another sheet of paper, you're welcome to practice. I'm gonna do it once on here and then on my canvas as well. So swapping to the baby brush, gonna pick up a little red and a little white. I'm adding white just so it's easy to cover up and it's gonna mask whatever color is beneath it. So it's almost like a pink. All right, so imagine here is my horizon line, that what we just, what we just did. Now our truck is going to start with a rectangle. It's gonna come a little down past our horizon line. So kind of like a Kleenex box. I don't know why I thought of that, but that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> so once we have this first rectangle, we are gonna make another one. This one's gonna be a little thinner and a little taller. All right, so that is the cab of my truck. And this right here is the bed. So really doesn't look like too much of a truck right now, but that's okay. So did it once, good to get some practice. Now I'm going to swap to the canvas. Same deal, baby brush, red and a little bit of white. Going to take it to that kind of Kleenex box. Now, a tip here. It's really easy to make something bigger. It is much harder to shrink something. So if you are a little nervous, you're not sure how big you want it, start small. Way easier to make something bigger. All right, first box down. Second one, it's gonna be a little narrower, so it's good to kind of map out those two little lines. And then adding the top. Now, I don't know much about trucks, so if you're really into, into trucks and have like a specific model you wanna make, go for it. I'm, I'm dumbing mine down. This is like a, a little toy truck. Alrighty, once you have these two, all you gotta do is fill them in. So I'm just gonna fill them in with that red, mostly red, maybe a tiny bit of white. You may find your red is a little translucent, a little see-through. So if that, if that happens to you, like check it out down in here where I'm going over that blue, it's a little see-through. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white and it looks pink right now, but and once that dries, I can go over it with pure red and it will be more visible. So say you have a dark wall in your house and you wanna paint it bright yellow. You would prime it first. So that's kind of like what the white does, acts as a primer. At this point, um, you can step back from your painting See it a little bit distance because sometimes we get stuck really close and miss the big picture. So when I step back from mine, I notice it's a little round. Maybe I wanna sharpen it up, make it more boxy. All right, so we're gonna let this dry a little bit. And while we do that, we can add some trees on the side. So before we get into the details of our truck, we're gonna do some nice, simple pine trees. So pine trees are really fun and really repeatable. So once you kind of figure out the shape, you can make pine trees for days. So pine trees, I'm gonna do another little demo on here before taking it to the canvas. Pine trees are all straight lines at the trunk, straight-ish. And then with your baby brush, tapping lightly, so only the tip of the brush is in contact. We're just gonna wiggle and kind of zigzag our way down. 
the more random, the better. I don't want this to be like a fake Christmas tree or like one of those weird cell towers that looks like it's trying to be a tree. So try to be a little random. Nature is more random than the trees you get at the Home Depot. So cute little tree here. And uh, do one more. And these are fun to practice too, if you wanna practice along with me. So again, tip of the brush, trunk first, starting really skinny at the top and getting wider as you go down. And another thing is trees are gonna be most dense around the trunk. So you don't wanna really see your trunk. So it's thinner and kind of more brushy out towards the end of the branch. All right, taking it to the canvas now. So let's look at these trees. They're all different heights. They're all different widths. And they're kind of this pretty dark evergreen color. So to get that, we are going to mix our green. It's called phthalo green and a little bit of black. So we have green and a little bit of black. Only a little black because it can really overpower the green if you're not careful. I'm just going to start adding trees around my truck. And sometimes I'll just do the um, trunks just to kind of get a nice layout here making them each different height. And just be careful when you get close to your truck, you don't wanna overlap our truck. So maybe just be a little careful when you start to get close to the red. But take these trees as tall as you want and just go one by one, take your time. These kind of become like a meditation. Check this out. If you want, you can add a little white in there and see how it starts to look almost a little snowy already. So this is a style choice. If you want, you can add a touch of white in there. Starts to build our texture. We'll add some more snow on top of our trees later, but I feel like this already adds so much more depth to our trees. But the base is still pretty dark, so keep in the base color of your tree. Green, and a little bit of black. Hanging all the way to the ground. No floating trees. Now for this next tree, I'm gonna show you guys something, because in these classes I see this a lot. So sometimes we are making our trees and we get really excited. And by the time we get to the bottom, we have like a mascara applicator. There's no real change in width. So if this happens to you, and it might, that's okay. All you gotta do is make it a little taller. Be real careful, real thin at the top, keep that thin. And then make it wider at the bottom. So. If you have a tree emergency, it can be saved. Don't worry. And if you're ever going along and you just are like, I do not like this painting and I do not like what I've done, the beauty of acrylic paint is you can paint over it. So once it dries, you can always go over top. A canvas is forever. Sometimes if you go to a thrift store and find an old canvas, you can just put some primer over that, start over. Pretty cool. All right, those ones are pretty dark. I'm gonna add a little bit of white in here. Starting to get that snowy texture. I love doing this when the paint's still a little wet because see how it starts to blend? Creates all those fun little mid-tones. A little bit of white in there while it's still wet. Nice. This is another good time to step back from your painting. Look at it maybe at arm's length. You can even take a picture with your phone. Um, and you'll probably notice things you don't notice up close. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with these. I like these trees. I think they're cute. 
So this painting, we kind of go back and forth between the truck and the trees while things are drying. So now I get to come back into our truck to add some details. So let's take a look at the example, see what we have to do. So you see how in here it's a little lighter, starts to create some depth just by having darker red and lighter red. We're gonna do that first before we add our little wheels and bumper. Okay, you can either use the mama or the baby brush, whichever you're more comfortable with. I'm going to use the mama to start. Little bit of white, little bit of red. So this is kind of a pink, but trust me on this. So coming to the middle of my truck bed, I'm gonna make a little internal square. And it doesn't have to be super blended. It's an old truck, right? Can be kind of a little beat up looking. You know what, I just picked up a little gray on there, but I'm not mad about it. I think it's kind of cool. All right, so we put that center square on the bed. And then with that same pinky color, so white and red, I'm gonna outline the top. So just a little outline here. And we're already starting to build the shape of our truck. Okay, we're done with pink. Now we're going to make a darker red. So this is mostly red, the teeniest bit of black. And I mean teeny tiny. So this is like a red wine color. And now we're just gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna outline the bed and this darker red. And an internal square. So it's kind of the opposite. Each uh, the top and bottom are different from each other. Okay, time to add the bumper, which is just going to be white to start. So coming below my uh, truck bed, I'm just going to make a little white line here. And this is my baby brush. I think everything's with the baby brush from here on out. Things getting smaller and more detailed. All right, so I got a little white, but check this out. White and black makes gray. Who knew that, of course, but just checking. So I have some gray on there. My white is still wet, but this is a great opportunity. Take some gray and just kind of brush it in. See how it blends so nicely? It starts to look like chrome. And you don't have to over blend it. I think it's nice to kind of keep it a little streaky. Awesome, got our, got our bumper on here. What are we missing? We're missing wheels. All right, wheels time. I'm gonna take a baby brush and get some black. Black paint, baby brush. Now we're not seeing the entire wheel. This is just the bottom. So on either side, I'm just gonna make the letter U. Two letter U's and just fill them in with black. This is another great opportunity to practice uh, making something small. Be a little conservative with the size of your tires because that can kind of <laughs> throw it off if you have these big monster truck tires on such a tiny little truck. Alrighty, we're getting there. Starting to look like a truck. Outline time. Since we have black on our brush already, we are going to take black paint, baby brush, and just start outlining things. So what can we outline here? We can outline the truck the bumper, take it slow. Outlining can be a little tedious, not gonna lie. I'm also just realizing that my truck bed is super tall. I don't know how I missed that before, but that's life. And we can fix it with the, uh, with the tree later. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, outlining the top. And 
I think that's good for now. One more line over here. Okay, remember how I just noticed how tall my truck bed is? How funny that looks? Well, everyone makes mistakes, myself included. So all I'm gonna do is take a black line a little lower here. And that way it's kind of like, this could be the inside of the bed, a little space maybe. Cool. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Coming back to our trees now, we are going to add even more snow. Baby brush till the end, taking some white and a little bit of blue. White and a little bit of blue. So this is like a really pale snowy blue. And we are gonna start to add snow to the top branches or the tops of the branches. So just lightly in a similar style and method of how you made your tree, you're just going to kind of tap on top. See how it's already starting to look like snow? Up close, it might look a little crazy. When you step back, <clears throat> the snow really starts to pop. So light blue and white all over the pines. I don't know where you're painting from. I'm painting from Utah, Park City, and we love snow. As a ski town, we really need snow, so I like to paint as much snow as I can on the trees. I don't need too much. A little bit goes a long way. Okay, since the blue is on our brush, now is the time to add our tire marks. So just kind of right underneath, vertically, our tires. I'm just gonna do little kind of side to side marks. Looks like he was driving in the snow. Great. All right, we have one more tree to add. I don't know if you noticed this, but there is a tree in the back of the truck. So check it out. It's a, it's a little kind of bent over. So I think that that looks like a real tree you would pick up from the Christmas tree, the Christmas tree store. From the nursery? I don't know, where do you buy Christmas trees? Huh? Oh, and you cut it down. Yes. <laughs> you don't buy it from the store. You go out there and cut it down yourself. I've never done that. Um, but maybe I'll do it this year. <laughs> There's a lot of Christmas trees or pine trees where I live. So starting again, how we did our first trees, I am going to make the trunk. But this time the trunk is going to be kind of sideways. So again, this is going to be green, a little bit of black to start. Dab in side to side. And you're gonna notice it looks like a different color being on top of the red. It looks kind of like black. So check this out, a little bit of white paint and our tree will come to life. A Little bit of white mixing in with our darker green. And our tree is looking good. Last up, you can add that snow, that white and blue that we just added to our other trees on top of here. Even if you cut it down, it might still be holding a little snow. Cute. Tree looks a little sad to be, uh, <laughs> to be leaving the forest, but but I think he'll be very happy once he's covered in ornaments. Awesome. Okay, what's left? We have lights, tail lights, and then writing whatever message you wanna write on the back of your truck. So I'm gonna edit my truck a little more just to kind of adjust the height of it. So I'm just gonna do a little fix a here with the dark red. So you don't pay attention to this if the, if the shape of your truck is looking good, but I gotta get mine dialed. 
There we go. That looks a little better. <laughs> okay, so for the uh, tail lights, it's going to be yellow and white. And make sure you add the white in there or else it won't um, be that visible on top of your dark red. So just a little kind of line here and there. And I like to add one more little white dot below it just so it looks like kind of a real truck light there. Great. And then whatever message you want to write, I'm going to make mine... I'm gonna put love because it's short. <laughs> so if you have a long last name, like, I don't know, Skanowitz or something, you might wanna think of it something else to write on the back of your truck. That might be a little stressful. Okay, from here, you can kind of tinker wherever you need. So if you wanna add more snow to your trees, if you wanna add Maybe a little highlights onto your truck. So check this out. A little bit of white, a little bit of shine. I think that makes it look pretty fun. Like it's shiny. Awesome. Okay, the final step for every painting, this one included, is to sign your work. Gallery standard is the bottom right hand corner. Initials keep it really easy, but if you want to write something on the back, maybe you want to write Merry Christmas Mom. It won't shine through. So the back is great for kind of secret messages if you're going to gift this to someone. But that was so fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I would love to get any feedback um, and kind of hear how the painting went for you guys. If you want to reach out, and kind of share your experience, you can find us on, on Instagram. This might be backwards, but the, um, our Instagram is at the underscore paint mixer, or you can just hashtag the paint mixer and we would love to repost your work. I will add it in the little chat here. Um, but thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you painting with us and we still have public and private events going on uh, throughout the holiday season. So make sure you go to thepaintmixer.com and check out our full calendar. We have some really fun holiday ornament classes. Um, we have some kind of shot skis that are going to be really fun as kind of an adult um, class. We do a lot of classes on Zoom as well. So if you are thinking of something you want to do with your family, maybe not in person, but something still really intimate and fun, Zoom art classes are really successful and a great time. So um, definitely check us out thepaintmixer.com. And thanks again. We'll be painting with you soon.